Debbie, a huge welcome, huge thank you for being here with us today to unveil your gorgeous new font and show us how to apply it to some amazing wedding designs. So today, Debbie, we're going to pack a lot in. We're going to do some Q&A later, but I believe you're going to show people what this font can do. We're going to mm -hmm. see it in some wedding applications and see a demonstration of how a project like that comes together with some mood boards and all kinds of stuff. So it's going to be a real design geek out session for everyone. Yes, absolutely. So we're looking at creating a beautiful wedding invitation in Photoshop. And for me, I really love um, beautiful letters. I love to give wedding designers lots of alternates. So you can see I tried to use a lot of different alternates here just to kind of showcase what that can do. So first, I like to talk about how you approach designing a wedding invitation. And the first thing is think about what's the style for the event. Is it formal, casual, traditional, or modern? Or is it personal and unique? There's so many different ways you can go. So one of the ways to kind of gather your thoughts about what you want it to look like is to create an inspiration board. And blue is like the hot color for 2020. So, and it's one of my favorites actually. So I thought it'd be fun to do something with the blue palette. Then from that inspiration board, you can create your color palette. So this is just a basic, simple color palette. I don't think you wanna to go too crazy, especially on all of the signage because it makes it more clean when you keep uh, your color palette simple. The, what, so now you've got your color palette and you're thinking about the word hierarchy. What information needs to go on there? What's the most important to the least important? Typically it's the names and a lot of times people like to emphasize the date, um, but it's good to just think about that put all that information down. Then the next thing, of course, is select your fonts. And I would recommend the Hello My Love um, font for the script. And then you can look at a serif or sans serif to pair with that. And there's tons of information on pairing fonts. So I would suggest that you can just search that if you have any confusion about that. But for what we're going to do today, I've, cho I've chosen Baskerville Old Face because it's a beautiful font and a lot of people have it on their computer already. The next thing is to select the style. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through um, the process of creating a font, showing you a traditional style. Then the demonstration I'll be doing in Photoshop will be um, in a modern style. So just to give you some different choices. So if we're ready to start, the things to consider for the design, of course, good layout. Make sure everything fits and there's balance. Make sure there's positive and negative space. You wanna have lots of breathing room around all of the letters. And then have something of interest, create a focal point. So this is an example of a very basic imitation and it does have good layout. It has the good positive and negative space. And the monogram feature up here creates something of interest. But what if we want to take it up a notch? We can add more to the focal point. We can increase the difference in word size. So you can see the difference. We've already punched it up with some added floral, as well as bringing up the size of the names and the venue. So that's already making a much bigger impact. But what if you want to do something more? How about if you add some high contrast? So we can invert the design and we can add a frame. And again, it's just adding more impact. But even still, what if we bring in another color from the palette? So I've created a white border, brought in a yellow frame around it. And then what if we used a contrasting return envelope? So as the invitation suite comes together, you just got that nice pot. I love tying the envelope in, that's a nice touch. Yeah, so the whole invitation suite might include the invitation envelope, the RSVP card and envelope, and you might have additional things like a details card or rehearsal dinner card. So a whole suite might look like this. Now, if you look at what we've created in the invitation, what I've done to extend the look beyond just the invitation to the whole suite is taken parts of our focal point. So 
part this one particular floral, you can enlarge it and put it on the RSVP card. You can take another part of the floral and put it on your return envelope. Still yet, you can take one of the flowers in the floral and add it to the RSVP um, reply card envelope. So there's so many different options. This is just one of them, but you can also add some shimmer paper. You can add pocket folders. You can do ribbon, glitter tape. And these are just some simple examples of some DIY invitations made in Photoshop, adding a ribbon, of course, having envelopes hand addressed in calligraphy or using the script font to address the envelopes in the matching color is really a beautiful touch. And then of course, here's an example of a pocket folder using shimmer paper. We've got a contrasting envelope. We've got some glitter tape. And you can see all of the little cards fit nicely into the pouch. And then still another way to uh, close that pouch is with a monogram. Um, I will tell you, you don't want to put the letter of your soon to be name. You want to put the letter of your current last name or the initials of the bride and groom. So the next thing we would do is look at a modern style. So this is what I'm going to be demonstrating in Photoshop, how to create this invitation. And as you can see, I've done the same thing, pulling out some of the features from the florals to add to the details card, the RSVP card, same thing with the RSVP envelope and the invitation envelope. So we can now get to the demonstration. That watercolor mask is really, really lovely, by the way. Yes, and I'm going to show like people that. how to do that. Amazing. Let's do it. Yeah. And watercolor is a very um, popular look right now, and I think it's a really fresh look. So that's why I chose to do this. In addition, having lots of white space is a very popular look. So we're going Yeah, to I like the negative space on the left. Yeah, yeah. So basically what I've done is I created this watercolor by simply using a large brush, some gouache paint and watercolor paper. And that's exactly what I did. And then I took a picture with my phone and I sent it to my email. And of course, then I just popped it into Photoshop by just dragging it into Photoshop. And now I'm just going to show you how to easily remove this background. So you're going to go to the tool box. And if you can't see all three tools, just right click and you'll want to grab the magic eraser tool and make sure that that layer is selected and then just click on the background and magic presto it's gone. And then we can go ahead and move it into our um, invitation. So now we want to look at how do we get the uh, ornaments and the names into the invitation. So I'm going to, of course, create a layer and a text box. And I want to make sure that my color is white. I'm going to make sure that I have this on Hello My Love Pro. And I'm going to go ahead and type in the first name. And I know that the size that I want this to be is 60. So we've got Sarah's name. That's lovely. But what if we want to make it look a little bit fancier? So as you see, as soon as I am on the S, all of the options come up. And there are tons of options. I was going to say, that's a lot of alternates. <laughs> yes, yes. I've got so many alternates for every single letter. It's like my favorite thing to do. There are 1,960 glyphs in the font. What? 200, yeah, 215 uppercase alternates, 259 lowercase alternates. I like to give people a lot of choices. It's incredible. So, Let's go with this S. I like that. It's one of my favorites. But if you wanted to see what a different S might look like, all we have to do 
is just keep clicking on the box. This is a fun S if you have a T over here. I've got several letters like that. Um, this is another one that's very fun. So now we're going to look at the H. And again, we have so many different options that we can choose. So it's just a matter of which one do you like. I feel like this balances us out really nicely. So I'm going to keep it right there. One note of caution, one of the things that I see in lettering and also in using fonts is people tending to over flourish, using too many flourishes in one word or one name. So be very careful uh, with flourishes. It's typically less is more. So now we've got our first name and we want to bring in the word and. And the cool thing is that I have, and I already know that that is going to be 43 points because I've already got this figured out. Let's move it a little bit. So I've got the word and, but what I might want to do is I might want to use something a little bit more fun. So I'm going to go to the glyph, the glyph palette, which I have already minimized here. But if you don't know where to go, you go to type panels, and there you'll find the glyph panel. And I am going to click on discretionary ligatures. And that is where I've put this kind of fancier. Oh, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that's um, maybe people don't realize is as font designers, we, we try to put lots of cool extras in to a font. And sometimes you have to place them different places because, um, you know, you just, they just have to go, uh, they can only go so many places. So it's good to look through the glyph panel and look through all of these different options to see what a font has. So now we're going to add Thomas's name. So now we want to add some of the ornaments. And what I've done is I've really created these ornaments so that you can use well, just this font and you can make everything in your suite. So what we saw were the florals. And I'm going to show you that in the user guide, I have a keyboard guide and there are two pages because there are 91 ornaments. So if I just look at the keyboard guide, I can say, okay, I want this this V, and then I can go to the next page, and I'm gonna use this one with the question mark. So that's as simple as it is, just going ahead and looking at that to make your selection, and I can go in and, oops, first I wanna to switch to the ornaments, and just give myself a V, and this size is going to be much larger. So we're going to type in 220. It's so much more than a font, Debbie. It's like an entire graphics pack built in. And I love that you can do all of it in line. You don't need yeah. to leave your canvas even. You no. Designed to your heart's content. Right. And then we can just copy that and move it over. And we can just change that by shift question mark this one is a different size whoops i always do that sorry <laughs> don't worry uh, nice to see it in action uh-huh and we're going to reduce this to 150 and you can move this around where you want it and again I've already, it's kind of like a cooking show where you show how you're making it, but then you already have it baked. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh out of so, the oven. Yeah. So there we have everything that we need for our, our top focal point. And now we just would add the wording. Of course, I don't have to go through this because it's pretty self-explanatory to make the text box and lay this in. But there we have this beautiful, fresh, very light, um springy wedding invitation and it didn't take long at all so one of the things i want to give a shout out to victoria york who is an 
extraordinary invitation designer. And she is one of the designers that I consult with to ask them, what are your needs as an invitation designer? What is going to help you do your job better? And she has been so wonderful to give me so many great specific things that would be helpful. So one of the things that she suggested is to allow the Roman numerals to turn on automatically because as she explained, she might have a list of 1,100 invitations that need to be printed in the script font. And of course, you're going to have some people that have a um, room, Roman numerals in their name. So you can see this line right here. It might be given to her with the three I's capitalized instead of, you know, in Roman numerals. So all that she would have to do is go to this panel and you see how I'm turning on yeah. the actual alternates and it automatically changes the numerals. Now the other thing that she told me about was, um, well, actually, she didn't tell me about this, but this is a very common thing, is um, to also have standard ligatures for the types of letter combinations like TT, BB, you know, those are just very standard. So you can see here, this TT, okay, we're on the right layer. <laughs> <clears throat> if I highlight that and I turn off standard ligatures, you see what happens, it just goes back to the regular T. And we've got some little clashing there. So that's why we want to turn on standard ligatures and it automatically corrects that. Another thing that I've done, you can see highlighted in red, are um, I put a set of capitals in the swash feature. Now I have tons of alternates, as you see. So I had to just choose one to go in the swash feature because that's just part of the programming. So um, you'll find if you want to just instantly kind of get a, um, a look that is fun and a little bit more dressy, you can see when I turn this off, it's just plain and simple. When I turn it back on, it adds a swash feature. Another thing is creating beginning swashes. This is something that Sometimes a designer has a particular piece in um, the reply card, for instance, we added that on this D. And in order to do that, if I were to make all of the lowercase letters with a beginning swash, it's kind of redundant. So instead, I created separate swashes that can be added to a letter and they line up perfectly every time with every single lowercase letter. So if you look here, when I highlight just this swash. Oh, you they're can... separate. Mm -hmm. No way. I, I thought that was one, um, you know, extended character, but that's so seamless. Right. So you can do this very easily. And all of these swashes can be found, again, if you look over here, and you'll see there's a section for ornaments, and they're all in the ornaments file. That's huge. Yeah, I think I've covered pretty much everything that I could possibly imagine a, a designer needs. Um, so one of those things is a crossless T and a straight L. Now, because you have all these wonderfully flourished letters, it's kind of fun to have them do double duty by crossing a T. So you can see this particular D when you add it to the word details. This is a crossless T, so I'm going to show you. You don't have to go someplace else. You don't have to go and look for a straight L, which there are some straight Ls in many fonts and in my font as well. But I put it right in the T's so that when you have that idea to cross it with a beautifully flourished letter. In addition, you can see that just like um, the flourished, the swashes here, I've added some crossbars that can also be used to cross that same T anywhere, you know, in a word. And so here's two of the crossbars. So you'll see when I pull 
that up, there's more options. And this certainly, some of these could work as well. You have to be careful, but this one would work, this one would work. So, you know, you just kind of have to play around with them, but these three in particular are made for crossbars. And then the last is using an L, a straight L as a T. So sometimes you might wanna have this particular shape with this particular flourish underneath, but you wanna have it be a T. So again, we just combine our beautiful flourished letter with the L and that can also be a T. So multi-use there. Amazing. Then we come to contextual alternates. Now, one of the things that I think people may not understand about contextual alternates is what does that mean? So it really means that how a letter is being used in context. So a lot of times um, we, of course, for a large portion of letters, you have, you have a connecting stroke because in general, they're being used to connect with another letter. But what if they come at the end of a word? It's not a natural flow to have that end letter connect, that ending stroke come up and connect. So instead, what we do is we create the contextual alternates and we have them come in. We, it's coded so that they come in at the end of a word when you turn on text, contextual alternates. You can Again. See that. Pretty, pretty certain you've thought of everything here, Debbie. <laughs> I've tried. <laughs> I've tried. And um, and there are, you know, there's a few letters that it's it's fine the way that they end. Um, they look fine. They look like they flow naturally. So not every single letter is, does that, but the larger proportion of them do. Um, so let's look at, we have ampersands. We have three different ampersands. Always nice to have a choice there. And of course, we do have also the word and that can be used like an ampersand. And the ampersands can be found in the glyphs panel. The discretionary ligatures, as I showed you before, click on here, go up to the font and look for discretionary ligatures. So not only does it have the little number, which is kind of fun if you have an apartment number or you're using it for some other feature, um, and the and, but also these are some of the discretionary ligatures that might be a little bit more fun. They have just a little, a little different twist because when, again, when you're fitting things into a font, you only have so many spaces to put them, um, so many places. So when you have extra things, you want to, um, make them available for people. So putting them in the glyph panel in this type of place is mm -hmm. the best way to, to show them. Yeah. That makes and, sense. Yeah, and then we have the ordinals. And, you know, this is great if you're going to say the, whoops, the 1st of June, the 2nd of May, the 3rd of November, the 5th of August. So just a nice little way if you're adding some, some little um, element, you want some little element in your invitation to break up maybe some of the body text. I've created these ordinals that can kind of serve that purpose. Love it. I mean, so definitely comprehensive, Debbie. I <laughs> we, We've obviously been working with you and chatting with you throughout the process of making this font right from its conception. And yes. it has been amazing to see all the work you put in and just how well thought out it is. But thank you so much for demonstrating the full power and you know quite how much it can do. Absolutely, absolutely.